Welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining one of the APIs in Unix system programming that is Open API. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to share the video with your friends. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. So let me begin the explanation of Open API. So Open API is used to establish a connection between a process and a file. That means if any process wants to open a file, it is going to open a file using a Open API. Open API is used to open existing file for data transfer function or else Open API may also be used to create a new file. Right? If a file is already created, I can use a open API to open an existing file for data transfer. That means for uh, uh, reading, or re uh, reading or writing the data or else uh, I can use open API to create a new file also if it is not created. All right? And the open API is going to return the value of the file descriptor. Right, the returned value of the open system call is a file descriptor. The file descriptor contains the inode information. File descriptor is just like an address of a file. If you want to find out the file, you can use the information that is present in the file descriptor. So the inode number will be there, inode information will be there in the file descriptor. You can see there when a file is created, every file is assigned with the different different i node numbers this i node numbers this i node information uh, will be there in the file descriptor if you want to open any file you can use this i node number that is present in the file descriptor and you can access that or uh, you can open that file right guys and this is the prototype of a open function if you want to open any diff uh, any file in your program how you can do that you can use this open function prototype right so this open function contains three arguments right so it is declared in the fcntl header file i'm going to discuss more about the fcntl in the upcoming videos but so far you should know that open function contains three arguments right the first argument is the name of the file that to be created or opened right guys so the first argument that is path name is nothing but it is the name of the file you want to open or you want to create and the second argument is the access mode right the access mode which is an integer value that specify how actually the file should be accessed by the calling process i will discuss the access modes now but before that you should know that uh, if a if open function right is success so is succeeded in opening a file it returns a non negative integer right if successful open returns a non negative integer representing the open file descriptor if file is uh, successfully opened then what it uh, returns it returns a non negative integer that contains the file descriptor if it is unsuccessful if it is not able to open a file then it returns minus 1 then it returns the minus 1 so this the uh, what are the, what is the first argument here that is the name of the file you need to be opened and the second one is the access mode so what are the different types of access modes so here uh, mainly we have uh, three types of access modes uh, first uh, we will discuss these three types of access modes then i am going to discuss some other access modes right i can use this uh, other access modes also using uh, I can use these other access modes along with the these three access modes I will tell how it is so what are the access modes here first is read only 
the your uh, that is if you open a file for only reading purpose one is uh, write only you are going to open a file for only writing purpose another one is reading and writing you are going to open your file for both reading purpose and writing purpose along with this access modes i can use some modifier flags that means other access modes with this how i am going to use this uh, other access modes with this uh, right uh, three access modes means i'm going to use a bitwise r operator i can use bitwise r operator to combine different different access modes here right i will take the example uh, you will understand that so what first uh, before that i will explain this other access modes uh, other than this three right so first one is o append so what it does uh, it is going to append the data to the end of the file it's very simple it's going to append attach the data to the end of the file o create it is going to create the file if it does not exist if a file is not there it is going to create the file right and one is executable what it does it is going to generate an error it is going to generate an error if o create is specified and the file already exist you know that when you you have to use a o create if file doesn't exist but uh, if file is already exist but you are using a o create then it should say error right so if this o execute is going to generate error if you do like that next is truncate what it does if file is created if file is uh, exists already it is going to remove the file content and uh, once the content is removed the size of the file is set to 0 bytes right truncate what it does uh, it uh, if file exists if file is there it is going to remove the content of the file and it is going to set the size uh, of the file to 0 bytes understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section so one is non block so it specify subsequent read or write on the file when you want to read from the file or when you want to write to the file it is going to tell that it should be non blocking right it should be non blocking and lastly noc tty what it does it is going to specify not to use your terminal device file right your system device file as the calling process control terminal right so these are all the uh, different types of access modifier flags that can be used with this three access modes right now i'll take the example so this is the example statement here you know that i'm using a file descriptor and using a open system call so what is the first argument i am going to uh, first argument is the name of the file i am going to open here that is i am uh, there is a path name here i am opening a uh, file usp from the user vishu so here user does uh, user folder is there in that user folder user named vishu is there in that vishu folder uh, the uh, usp file is there you are opening a file and one more what is the second argument here access mode you can see there i am using two different types of access modes by using a r operator here pipe symbol you can see there uh, i combined uh, read write and also o append i am combined uh, read write and also o append getting guys third argument i am not using here why i am not using me third argument is used only when you create a new file here i am opening a file that's why i am not using the third argument when you want to create a new file using a open api then you can use the third argument that is going to tell about the right different types of uh, file permissions we will discuss this file permissions also now see here and one more important thing if the file is opened in read only 
then no other modifier flags can be used. You can see that here I am used read write. That's only that's why only I can use the other access modifier here. If it is often only for reading purpose, I can't use this other access modifiers. Getting guys? And if a file is opened in write only or read write, then we are allowed to use any modifier flags. That's why in this example I used read write. Then only I can uh, append. Uh, sorry, then only I can. Uh, use different types of access modifiers so remember that right if you want to use this modifiers it should be write or read write right so the third argument you know that right i told you file permissions about the file permission this third argument is used only when a new file is being created right so this table gives the symbolic name for file permissions. I'm going to discuss different types of file permissions you can give for a particular file when you create it. So what are the permissions? First one is uh, IRUSR that is read by owner. You can that file can be read by owner, right? And the next symbol is IWUSR. That means uh, that our file can be write by owner. And next one is IXUSR. X means execute. Right? Uh, the file can be executed by owner. Next is IRWXU. IRWXU means you can read, you can write, you can execute. Owner can do all this: read, write, and execute. And IRGRP, a group can read the file. And next is IWGRP. Write can it can be a file can be write by group. Next is IXGRP file can be executed by group. Next is IRWXG that means read write execute. A group can read write and execute. Group of users can read write and execute. Next IROTH read by others. Others can read IRWTH others can write. Not the owner others right not the owner others next ixoth execute by others other can execute and lastly irwxo so others can read write and execute getting guys so these are the different types of file permissions so hope you are understanding the concepts guys if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video